God is already here. He's with us. Isn't that good? Why don't you all stand? Come on. Let's get ourselves in the presence of the Lord. We are in the presence of the Almighty. I know it's hard to, when you've had a week and you're coming into the house of God and you're wanting to just connect up. Can we lift our hands in this place? Come on. Father, we bless this day. We bless you in this place. We thank you for your presence that changes our lives, that changes who we are, that takes a heart that sometimes gets hardened and is like that of stone. But Lord, I thank you that, Lord, you rolled that stone away and paved the way for us in the name of Jesus. And you made a way to, the way to where there was none, Lord. So we exalt you in this place. Come on, somebody. We exalt you in this place. We lift you high, name above every name, the great I am. Christ in us, the hope of glory. We surrender to you this morning. We pour our love on you, our affection on you, and we put our focus solely on Jesus this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Can you all worship with us today?
and he is our price. We're drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes, and grace is an ocean that we're all sinking. Come on, sing it again. And we are his portion, and he is our prize. We're drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes, and a grace is an ocean we're all sinking. So heaven meets earth like a sloppy wet kiss, and my heart turns violently inside my chest, and I don't. Somebody lift up a shout. Come on. Come on. Does anybody love Jesus in this place? Oh, we may have all y'all this morning here. And thank you for coming out to join and watch our children's and youth program called Building Easter. Our children and our youth are an outstanding group of kids and teens that have been working now since February to make sure they were ready to present this for you this morning. So we hope you enjoy it. But first... We wanted to celebrate Palm Sunday with all of our preschoolers. So before our stuff begins, our preschoolers are going to walk through braving the palm branches as they did when Jesus entered on his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. So if y'all guys will pay attention, here comes our preschool ministry. construction worker here in Lego City and today is a really big day for us. If you haven't heard, this is the season of Easter, my favorite holiday. Easter is the time when we celebrate our freedom. On Easter Sunday, a man named Jesus, well, I don't want to give any spoilers, but why not? A man named Jesus rose from the grave. That's right, he came back to life, but Jesus was no ordinary man. He was the son of God who died so he could forgive our sins and give us eternal life. Today, my boss has called me and the other master builders in for a special construction project. It's a 
colorful job, but also an unusual job. We're not going to be putting up buildings, cars, or spaceships, at least I don't think we are, but we're going to be using the colors of Legos to tell what Jesus has done for us. i got to get going. It's almost starting time. Maybe you guys could sing a song while you wait for us to get things rolling. It's Easter, guys, so let Jesus hear you. my foreman. Benny, where are you? Right here, your master building this, sir. This is a very important build today, Benny. We're going to be making a... Spaceship? Wrong. Doggone it. We're building a garden, Benny. A beautiful garden full of trees and grass and shrubbery. Shrubbery? Lots and lots of shrubbery. <laughs> what a fun word, shrubbery. It sounds like rubbery. Is shrubbery rubbery? No, it's kind of leafy and planty. Leafy and planty. And green. Green, got it. Say, who are you building this garden for? It's for Jesus. Ooh, the master, master builder. That's the one. Boy, that guy created everything. The sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, Myrtle Beach. All of it. He didn't even need Legos. <laughs> Not him. So why are we building this garden? The master, master builder is troubled. He needs a comfortable place to pray tonight. Oh, yeah? What's he praying for? He's praying because he's troubled. To tell the truth, he's afraid to die. He's afraid of dying. Why would he be afraid of that? He's a master, master builder. And he's also fully human. He knows what it is to feel pain and suffering. 
in that he's about to suffer the most horrible death mankind ever devised. You mean someone actually wants to kill Jesus? Don't you know what's going on, Benny? One of Jesus' own disciples has betrayed him. He's gone to Jesus' enemies who are turning the people against him. We gotta do something, boss. We can't let Jesus die. But it's not up to us, Benny. Believe it or not, this is why the Master Master Builder was born to our world. To die? Yes. To be betrayed by his own friend? Yes. No wonder Jesus needs a place to pray tonight. He needs it right now. I know any time I feel afraid, a troubled prayer helps me feel a whole lot better. Me too, Benny. We all need to pray every day, especially when we're feeling sad or upset or even afraid. It'll be quieter without that megaphone. And there's a megaphone. I said it needs to be... Oops, sorry, boss. Oh, well, come on, Benny. We've got some shrubberies to build. Matthew 26, 36 through 46. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he says to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said with, to them, My soul is very sorrowful. Even to death, remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not just watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Green is the color of growth. It is the color of grass, shrubs, and new leaves on the tree in the spring. Green is the color of things that are growing and alive. Green is also a very soothing color. It's a peaceful color, a color that helps us to relax. That's why gardeners are such a great place to get away and relax. Green can help us clear our minds, let go of our troubles, and pray. When Jesus needed comfort, he went someplace green. He surrounded himself with the beauty of a garden as he prayed for God's will. Jesus was troubled, afraid, and sad, but Jesus found comfort, not just in the garden, but in prayer. Prayer can give us comfort when we are troubled. Prayer can also help us to grow in our faith. You may not have a quiet garden, but you can pray anywhere, anytime. Jesus will be there, and he, he will give, and he will give you the comfort and peace you need. Give your sadness and troubles to Jesus, and he will meet you in the garden. <laughs>
shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i shall bow in humble adoration Boys and girls did a nice job. That was one beautiful green garden they made. Yes, it was. I sure hope Jesus found some peace in the garden. Me too, Benny, because it's time to tear it down and move on. Move on. What comes next? It's nighttime, Benny, and things are about to get black. Black? That's right. Black. How black are we talking? As black as can be. We're going to need every black piece in the toy box. Sounds pretty black. Is it really all that bad? Well, first, Jesus' disciple Judas betrays him and hands him over to the people who want to kill him. Whoa. And then Jesus gets put on trial in the middle of the night, accused of crimes he didn't commit. Yikes. And just when things couldn't get any blacker, one of his best friends, Peter... That's the guy who said he would follow Jesus even to death. He denies even knowing Jesus. Ouch. Three times. Holy darkest night, Batman. That's black. I told you. Boy, I can't believe that about Peter. He loved Jesus. He promised Jesus he would never deny him. And Jesus told him that he would deny knowing him three times. If I were Jesus, I would be mad. Well, Benny, this is why Jesus came. He came because we're not perfect, because we make promises we can't keep. But because of what Jesus did, he was not only able to forgive Peter, but transform him into one of the bravest of all the early church leaders. And he did give his life for Jesus. He did? We all have times when we're afraid. When life gets hopelessly black, it's easy to give up. But, when, but God can give us the courage to stand strong and stand up for him. I know I've had times when I was afraid to speak up and do the right thing. When other people are doing the wrong thing, it's hard. Well, I know how you feel, Benny. I've been there many times. But when we give all our fears to God, he will give us the strength to stand up for him. I'm glad to hear that. Things are about to get pretty black in here with all these black Lego pieces. I sure am glad to hear that God will still be with us. Mark fourteen sixty six to 72 And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also are with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Black Legos can make a lot of cool things, from dark, scary castles, to sleek race cars, to the world of Lego Batman. Black Legos can create worlds that are dark, mysterious, and a little spooky. Black can also represent the unknown and the things we fear. We don't like the unknown, and we don't like darkness. Peter denied Jesus because he was afraid. He was afraid of the unknown, of what the people would do to him if he stood up for Jesus. Years later, Peter would conquer his fears, not because he himself became stronger, 
but because he gave his fears to Jesus. We don't like things we cannot control. Fortunately for us, we have a God who is in control. God knows what lies beyond the darkness, and God can give us the strength to face our fears. Whatever you're afraid of today, don't hang on to that fear anymore. Give your fears to God. Give your fears to God and let God lead you through the darkest times. Because no matter what you're facing, he's faced that challenge too.
just getting closer, boss. Yes, it is, Benny. Almost time for egg hunts, those chocolate bunnies, and those pastel outfits. We only go to church once a year. You know the ones. Yes, I know the ones. Last year, I wore yellow because my mom had purple, my sister was in pink, and my dad was in blue. But this year, I got to pick first, so I'm wearing pastel green. My mom's in pink. My mom, my dad is in purple, and my sister is in blue. That's a lot of color. We just talked about going all yellow or all pink, but Mom likes the way we look in our individual colors, you know? Well, that's very Easter. What about you, boss? What color are you thinking about? Red. Red? Hate to tell you this, boss, but red is not a pastel color. No, it's not. Are you really going to wear red on Easter Sunday? No. No, Benny, but before we get to the pastels, we have to go red. We do? If there's no red, there's no pastel pink, blue, purple, yellow, green, or even orange. Really? I knew you could make purple, pink, and orange with red, but blue, yellow, and green? We're not making pastels either. The red is to save us from our sin. It is? Benny, don't you remember what happened on Friday? Before Easter, Jesus died for us. Oh, oh, I get it. You do? The red is the blood of Jesus, the blood that he shed for us on the cross. Exactly. Gosh, I was so excited for Easter, I guess I forgot how Jesus got there. It's the reason Jesus came, Benny, to die for us. Jesus shed his blood and died a horrible death so that when we die, we won't be separated from God. I can't imagine doing what Jesus did, dying for the whole world. He suffered a lot for us, Benny, but it was the only way to reunite us with God. I guess we need some red bricks, huh, boss? We do, Benny. We need a lot of them. Jesus shed his blood and paid for the sins of the whole world. Anyone who believes in Jesus will have their sins covered by his blood. Not a pretty sight, boss. All those blood red bricks. No, Benny, but because of the red blood of Jesus, we can be saved. Luke 23, 32 through 43. Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they arrived at the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals. One on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching. <clears throat> but the ruler scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription above him, saying, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due rewards of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Red is a bright, bold color. It's hard to miss. It's a color used by many professional sports teams as a part of their logo. It's a color used on street signs with important warning messages, signs like stop and do not enter. It's a color that delivers a message when you need someone's attention. On Good Friday, the Friday before Easter, red represents the blood of Jesus. Red represents pain. It represents suffering. Jesus was beaten severely. He had a crown of thorns forced upon his head. He had nails driven into his hands and feet. He had a sword pierced into his side. Jesus shed a great deal of blood on the cross. He gave his life as a sacrifice for ours because it was the only way to save us. He died for the thief on the cross, and he died for all of you. Because of the blood of Jesus, we can have our sins forgiven. His blood is enough to cover all of our sins.
streams of grace go deep and wide for all the love I've ever found comes like a Jesus rose from the grave. That's right, Benny. Jesus is alive, and because he lives, we can all have a personal relationship with him. Is it really true that he's building a place for all of us? Yes, he is, Benny. Pearly gates, streets of gold, the light of God's glory everywhere. No wonder they call him the master, master builder. He's incredible, Benny, and he's done it all for us. 
So what color are we doing today? Blue for the blue skies, gray for the gray tomb Jesus left behind. Today, Benny, we need the color white. White? That's right, Benny, white. Today is the day we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus died to forgive our sins. And when he rose from the grave, God gave him the power to forgive our sins and give us eternal life. And you know what that means. Time tap for Easter eggs? Wrong. Just kidding. Of course I know what it means. Jesus died so he could give us something new, a pure white heart. That's right, Benny. We're going to need some, a lot of white bricks. Yes, we are, Benny. We're going to celebrate what Jesus did for us and tell everyone who can hear what Jesus can do for them. Okay, gang, you heard the boss. We need some white bricks in here. Pronto. This year has been a colorful holiday. You think so? Of course. We went from the green of the garden to the blackest of night to the red of Jesus' blood and now to the white heart Jesus offers us all. That is a lot of color, and it's a great way to teach the meaning of Easter. I hope our friends will remember it, too. Me, too, Benny, because there is no one who can change their life quite like Jesus. Amen. John 20, 1 through 10. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciples, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running toward the tomb, but the disciples outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloth lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him, and went into the tomb and saw the linen cloth lying there and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the other linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciples who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. As for yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. John twenty nineteen through 20. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Why is the color of purity? It's the color that represents cleanness, holiness, and perfection. Why is the color of brides on their wedding day? Why is the color that every laundry detergent promises to turn your dingy, dirty socks? Why is the color that tells us this is clean, this is brand new? Jesus went to a lot on Easter weekend. In the green garden, he experienced loneliness and fear. He saw his friend Peter deny him in the blackness of night because he was afraid. And Jesus shed his red blood for us on the cross. Jesus did all these things so he could make our hearts white as snow. When we believe that Jesus is Christ, Son of God, who died for our sins, who washes away all our sins, he, he, Jesus will miss nothing. He will not fail us. He will wipe our slate clean, and he will make our hearts pure. Jesus died to give you a white heart, an innocent heart, so you could stand before your Heavenly Father. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, let today be that day. Let Jesus take the sin from your heart. Let him wash you white as snow. Amen. Y'all ready to worship Jesus? Yeah! Nah, 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 nah. Y'all ready to worship Jesus? Yeah! That was still pretty weak. Y'all ready to worship Jesus? Come on, help him out. Yeah! Come on, let's sing it. God so loved the world that he gave. 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 His so so only. It's only sign. God's 
the story of Easter. Jesus died so he could take our sadness, our fear, and our sins and give us something new, a pure white heart. I hope you all have a happy Easter, but more important, I hope you all who haven't already will give your heart to Jesus this Easter. It's the greatest decision you'll ever make. Come on, that's better than that. They did a great job. Give them a standing ovation. Come on, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord.